Today on our 2013 Nissan Rogue, we're going to be taking a look at and showing you how to install the Takancha T1 vehicle wiring harness with a four pole flat trailer connector, part number 118480. So here's what our wiring looks like when it's fully installed. It is going to have a four pole flat trailer connector on the end, which is going to provide us our clearance lights, turn signals, and brake lights. Our wiring is going to have an included dust cover, and when we're not using our wiring, it's actually going to stay inside the car and live there at all times. So we can just take the wire, bundle it up, and we can leave it in the storage compartment right there so it'll be ready for us whenever we're ready to tow. Now that we've seen what it looks like, let's show you how to get it installed. To begin our installation, we're going to need to open up our rear hatch, and we're going to be removing the floor covering here as well as the storage compartments underneath. On each end of our storage compartment, we're going to have two knobs. There should be an arrow and an arrow right next to it. You're going to want to line up that arrow together so it will release the clip. So we're going to do that on the other side as well. And we can take out the storage compartment and set it aside. Now we're going to need to remove our threshold and we're going to have two pushpin plastic fasteners that are holding it in place just on the inside of our trunk area. I'm going to take a flat hip blade screwdriver and you're going to want to pop out the center section of the push pin, which will take some of the tension off, and then we can pull the whole push pin out. There is a small notch where you can get your screwdriver in to pop that center section out, and then we can pull the whole clip out. With those removed, you're going to want to reach underneath and start pulling slightly away and up to release the panel. You may have to give it a good tug, and it'll come right up. Just work your way across. Now if you get to the end and want to grab that side panel, what I usually do is I push down on the side panel at the same time that I'm lifting up so it'll hold that down while you're pulling up on your panel. Now if any of the plastic clips either got stuck or came out of your panel, you can just slide them back in place once you have them popped out. And we're going to set this aside. Now in order to get access to the wiring harness behind this panel here, we are going to have to remove each side of our storage compartment just on the side of our spare. Now there's going to be several bolts holding it in place. If we lift up the floor covering over here as well, we're going to have one bolt just towards the center inside of the covering. We're going to have another one underneath that floor covering. And then back here where our jack storage tools are, there's going to be another one back there. Now I'm going to be using a 10 millimeter socket to remove those. You may need to remove or remove the tools in order to get access to that bolt. Now in order to get our floor covering out, we come down to the bottom where the strap is and just go around the hook, which will free it up. We can do that on both sides and then we'll be able to pull it out. And we can set it aside so it won't be in the way. Then we can take the compartment and set it aside and remove the one on the passenger side as well. On the inside of our cargo area, just on the very back, we're going to have our cargo hooks. You're going to want to pull the hook up and then take a flathead screwdriver. We're actually going to pop that cover out, which is going to expose the fastener holding it in place. I'm going to be using a 10 millimeter socket to remove it. Once we have the fastener removed, the whole hook will come out and we're going to remove the one on the passenger side as well. Now if we come to our side panels here, you're going to want to gently start pulling away. And if you feel some tension, you can grab a trim panel tool or even a flathead screwdriver just to pop out that clip that's holding it in place. And you're going to want to have enough room just like this to where you can get to the taillight harness. And we're going to do that to the other side as well. So if we find the wire that's going into the grommet going out towards our taillight and we follow that harness down, going to bring us to this connector right here. I'm going to go ahead and pop it off of the clip, making it a little bit easier for me to get to it. Gives me a small tab on the top, and we'll push that tab in, and we can separate our two connectors. You're going to want to grab your wiring harness, and the connectors are going to match up, so we're going to plug the female end into the male end on the vehicle and then plug the other two together as well. 
and you're going to want to make sure that on the driver's side you're plugging in the yellow and brown connector. So we can go ahead and grab the T connector with the red and green wires and we're going to route them over to the passenger side and connect them over there. And disconnect them the same way and we're going to plug them in just like we did on the driver's side. Now that we have our two T connectors connected, we should have one white wire with a ring terminal, our red wire coming off, and our four pole wire. We're going to start off with our red wire here. I'm going to take one of the buck connectors provided in our kit, slip it over the stripped end of the wire, and crimp it into place. Now we can go ahead and take the length of black wire they provide us in our kit, and we're going to strip back one end of the wire. And we're going to put that into the other end of our buck connector. Now for our ground, we do have the option to use a self-tapping screw provided in our kit and attach it directly to some sheet metal. But if we pull our panel back, we're going to have a factory grounding point right here. I'm using a 10 millimeter socket to remove the bolt and then we can put our ground in place. Just going to slide the bolt through the ground on our harness and make sure that you get all the other grounds put back as well. Again, you got a couple different options of how you're going to mount your module. We got a tab at the top that we can take some zip ties and zip tie it to something, or we can take the double sided foam tape and secure it directly to the body. So take the backing off, press it firmly onto the module. And we take the other backing off, reach in and find a good spot behind our panel that's not going to interfere with anything. Just want to make sure we push nice and firm to make sure that glue is going to stick nice and good. Now the black wire that we connected to the red wire is going to have to be ran up to the battery of the vehicle. Now we can either run it through the inside or we can come to this grommet just right behind our spare tire. And I'm actually going to pop it out. Now you're going to want to feed enough of it down so you can grab it and pull all the slack out. Now once you pull all the slack out, it's always a good idea to double check up top to make sure it didn't get wadded up and knotted and not allowing you to get all the slack out. Now as I mentioned, we are going to have to run this black wire to our battery. Everybody's going to do it a little bit different. Just want to mention if you are running it along the outside you want to stay away from heat sources like the exhaust or any moving parts like the steering or suspension components. So I'm going to go ahead and route this and then I'll show you how I did. So I dropped my wire down, I went around the fuel tank support, zip tying it to the emergency brake cable, following down the side of the frame, went underneath this cover continuing to secure it when needed and finally I have it right here by the subframe and now we're going to need to get our wire up to the battery so we can move up top and I'll show you how we're going to do that. So I'm going to take a piece of airline tube I had laying around and if you don't have any you can use a coat hanger. Pretty much you just want anything that's going to hold this shape once you start pushing and we're going to feed it down through the engine bay so we can meet up with our wire underneath. Now, you just want to be careful because there is a lot of moving parts as well as a lot of heat sources. So you just want to be careful of where you're routing your airline tube or whatever you're using to reach your wire. So here's where my airline tube came out. I'm going to take my wire. I'm actually going to put it on the inside of my airline tube and take a small bit of electrical tape. We don't have to worry about the wire falling out when I go up top and start pulling it through. Once you get your wire all the way up, you want to pull all that slack out. And again, it's never a bad idea to double check underneath the vehicle to make sure it didn't get wadded up. I'm just going to take a zip tie and secure my wire to some factory wiring here. That way it doesn't fall down and it won't interfere with anything. So we're going to estimate about how much wire we need. And we can go ahead and cut back the excess and strip back the end of our black wire. You're going to want to grab the other buck connector from your kit and crimp it onto your black wire. 
you're gonna want to grab your fuse holder and since it is one continuous wire, I'm just gonna cut it straight in half and we're gonna strip back both ends. One end is going to go into the buck connector we just installed on the black wire, and we can crimp it in place. The other end we stripped, we're going to take the provided ring terminal and slip it over our wire and crimp it down. Now the ring terminals get connected directly to the battery. So you're going to want to grab a 12 millimeter socket and take the nut off the top of our battery post here. We can slide our terminal over it and then replace and tighten that nut. Now we can go ahead and take the 10 amp fuse that's provided, put it in the fuse holder and put the cover in place. For our grommet where we put our wire through, I'm going to go ahead and cut a slit in the grommet so that my wire can pass through. Put the grommet back in place. Come back with some silicone sealant and seal up that slit I made. Now if you need some silicone, you can pick some up on our website using part number LT37467. We can start putting all of our panels back into place. Just want to make sure you line up the clips and get everything nice and secure. Put our side panels back in place and securing them down with the bolts. And replace your cargo hooks. Before we put our threshold back in place, I'm just going to take excess wire. I'm just going to bundle it up and leave it right against the panel here and tuck it behind the threshold panel. That way it keeps everything nice and secure. Just want to make sure that you keep the wires away from the latch mechanism. And push it back in place, getting all the clips to lock it. And when you go to put your push pin fasteners back in, you're going to want to put the outer ring in first. Make sure it's seated all the way, and then push the center section to lock it in. Then we can take our floor coverings for the side. Put those back in place. Put our storage panel back in place. Finally, we can take our floor covering, hook it back into the hook, and make sure everything's nice and tidy when we put it back. Now, you can leave your four pole wiring underneath the storage compartment, or if you route it up, pull it out, put it in the storage compartment, then we can lock, lock it back down. So the last thing we're going to need to do is test our wiring and make sure that everything's working properly. So I'm going to plug in my four pole tester and if you need one of these you can pick one up on our website using part number I26. I'm going to grab an extra set of hands so they can run my lights and I can verify that they are working. Can you turn the headlights on please? Looks good. Left turn signal? Good. Right turn signal? Good. And the brakes. All right, can I have the brakes in both turn signals just to be sure? All right, with everything looking good, we're ready to hit the road. Then I'll finish up our look at the Takancha T1 vehicle wiring harness with four pole flat trailer connector, part number 118480 on our 2013 Nissan Rogue. Thanks for watching. Click the link in our description below to shop, learn more, or visit us at eTrailer.com. And leave us a comment if you have any questions.